Today, we are doing our first ever cook along and I have gathered together seven of the best SOS free chefs in the world. SOS standing for no sugar, oil or salt, which is the way I have eaten for many years. And what is really great about these chefs is they actually eat this way. So it wasn't like getting chefs and having them modify their recipes. They truly create recipes that are this way. Now I say seven of the best SOS free chefs. There's a few that are not here because they couldn't make it. Dylan Holmes, for example, is one, but he was busy today. And Kathy Fisher is out of the country, but we have some amazing, amazing chefs for you. And each one is doing a different course for today's Thanksgiving menu. If you're on my mailing list, you received a recipe or an ingredient list, and we're gonna share all the recipes by the end of the broadcast. So the first guest today, all the way from Kentucky is the Scott family and they are going to be making a beverage. They're going to be making holiday nog. Please welcome the Scott family. Woohoo! Hello! Happy Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving! Happy Thanksgiving. We are so, so excited to be here sharing this time with you today, Chef AJ and everyone else. And we had to come and share one of our favorite holiday drinks, okay? Yes. Chef AJ has renamed it Holiday Nog, but we call it Kali Nog. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Well, yeah, I, you're, yeah that's right. But, but it's, it's the holiday, right? Yes. yes. It is. Perfect name. Perfect name. So, so yes. Yeah, so, we are excited to share with you because it's dairy-free. There's no added sugar, no oil, no salt. And it's delicious. Yes. Trust me, it is totally delicious. Yes. So we're going to jump right in. And no eggs. That's right. Yeah, no, no eggs. eggs. Right. All right. Thank you, Jermaine. Yeah. So we're going to jump right in. It's really, really simple. Basically, you need a pot. Uh, fit it with the steamer basket and a little bit of water in there. And we're going to steam some veggies and our sweetness. So I'm going to let the kiddos share with you all what the first two ingredients are. So, Jeremiah, you want to share with them what the sweetness is going to be? So, yes, so the sweetness is going to be measured dates, and I actually have the seed in there. Mm -hmm. Make sure they take that take out, take out, out, right? The seed. Yes. So, you want to dump that into the pot? Good job. All right, Mr. Jermaine, what's next? What's next? That's cauliflower. Next, you're going to brain fart. <laughs> So how did you get the idea? I love the idea of putting vegetables in something that's normally, you know, doesn't have vegetables. It's sweet. Where did you get the idea for using cauliflower? And thanks, Deborah Chen, for sharing this. You guys share this episode. It's amazing. Yes, thank you, Deborah. Yeah, I'm always finding ways. I don't like to say the sneak in veggies because we're past the sneaking phase. Of, <laughs> but we're always yes. looking at ways how we can add more veggies to a dish. And I think I saw one of your videos, Chef AJ, where you made, uh, I don't know if it was Alfredo sauce or something, and the cauliflower actually helped the dish become very creamy. And I said, you know what? I think we should try to, instead of adding, you know, like eggs to um, the, um, the drink, let's add some more veggies. Let's add some cauliflower, you yes. know? So, and I did, I added the cauliflower along with um, some starch and sweetness, and it came out perfectly. So. Anytime I can add veggies in, I'm going to do it. And that's yes. just my motto because, you know, we just love our veggies. It's the healthiest food on the planet. So, and, ca and uh, cauliflower is a neutral vegetable, you know, to take on the flavor of whatever you're adding it to. So, that's basically how, how I did, how it came to be. So, and oh, and also, yes. and also, I actually was talking to Queen one time and I said, you know, I remember, you remember we used to drink some eggnog? She was like, yeah, you know, but I was like, man, but it tasted good then. She said, well, you know what? We can do that now with the veggies. And I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. So she just started experimenting and yeah. that's, that's when we got the drink. It was awesome. Yes. So what is the vegetable we're going to be adding, Jermaine? Cauliflower. Cauliflower. Don't drop them. <laughs> <laughs> so you just drop them in the bowl. Oh. Okay. And we're going to uh, put the bowl in the, in the sink, please. And we're going to steam this on top of the stove for eight minutes. Now, I know you're wondering why am I steaming the dates? Well, a lot of times dates are hard, you know, especially medjool dates. They could be dried out. So in your blender, um, we want this, the end product to be very, very smooth. So I said, why not throw them in with the cauliflower and just let them steam a little bit so they can soften up. So that's what we do. We place this on the stove for about eight minutes, let it steam. And then we're going to transfer these ingredients to the blender. 
Nice. Hey, so kids, what are you guys thankful for today or every day? Well, I'm thankful for my family and I'm thankful for a roof and clothes and shoes because a lot of kids in this world don't have things that I have. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm thankful for. Awesome, babes. That's beautiful. I'm thankful for your family, too. I wish I could be adopted by your family. (laughs) (laughs) You know, we love you. Yes. I'm thankful for my friends and family. All right. And, And Jeremiah? I'm thankful for food, friends, family, and... And fun. (laughs) (laughs) Right, and fun. So now, Chef AJ, to save time, I've already uh, steamed some cauliflower and the dates, and I'm just going to drop them into the blender. Yeah, well, you know, the the dates have swollen. Dates have swollen, yes. Water. Absorb the water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so we're just going to transfer all of these ingredients to the blender. I think another thing we love so much about this drink is that it can be done in a matter of minutes. That it's not a long drawn out process. um, And it's just sheer goodness after it's done. Yes. So now we're ready to add the rest of our ingredients. The next ingredient is actually a potato. What is a drink without some starch? This is a Japanese sweet potato. And uh, it's extremely sweet. It's like candy almost. Um, And we roasted it and you basically just peel the skin off and we measure about a half a cup and we're gonna put that into the blender. I said your part, didn't I, Destiny? It's okay, so yes. Jack of yams. Those are the Japanese soup potato yams. You need a spoon? Yes, yes, yes. It's awesome. very, very sweet and natural. Yes, mm-hmm. all natural sweetness. All right. Our next ingredient or ingredients will be our spices. And we have cinnamon in here, nutmeg, some vanilla bean powder, some turmeric, um, and a little bit of allspice. And Chef AJ, you did provide them with the... Uh, yeah, they're going to they're gonna get the recipe, like before, at least by the time the show ends. Yep. Awesome. Okay, cool. So you add that to the blender. And um, this can be optional. We really do try to stay away from extracts, but this rum extract really just bring home this drink. So we add a little bit of rum extract. If you want, you can leave it out, but I tell you, some things you just gotta add a little extract to, uh, to really bring home that taste that you're looking for. So we're gonna add one half teaspoon of uh, vanilla, not vanilla, I'm sorry. This is rum extract. Okay. It's rum extract. Yeah. Rum extract. <laughs> it's a flavor. All right. It's a flavor. Yeah. yeah. All right. Color. No, I'll do this. This cup yeah, is full. We'll Next, we're going to do two cups of water to the blender. If I was mm, doing that, volume. if I was mm-hmm. doing that, it's, I would spill it. Yeah. So, so you said it smells like sort of like eggnog already? Yeah, it does. All right, so the next easiest part is to blend. So we're gonna blend this until it's smooth and we're gonna transfer it to the because <laughs> this drink just smells so, so, so good. All right. So, and then basically you just put it in glasses. We like these little cute stem, long stem glasses with uh, festive writing on it. This one it's, says treat your elf. Treat your elf. It should okay. say treat yourself. Oh, it said treat yourself, yeah. No, it said treat yourself. Right, and you just basically That's fill the, the cups up. I think you get about four cups out of this drink. Um, or three, depending on, <laughs> <laughs> depending on how much you want to fill your cups. Oh. And this is the next most important part. This is not a drink you can drink right out of the blender. Yeah. Uh, number one, because it's hot. Number two, you want it to hot. chill for a couple of hours mm-hmm. in a refrigerator so all of the flavors can just gel together. Mm-hmm. 
and the um the drink actually get creamier the longer it sits mm -hmm. so um well yep. oh i'll right. take this i'll take you get the ones out of the refrigerator okay so we have some already chilled excuse me let's put yep. watch out that's mm -hmm. should make it yeah what's up i had this word problem like that said garden. had the name bailey yeah. really Bailey misses you guys so much. Hey guys, talk about your blog and your YouTube channel. So where can people find you? Okay, you want to, I'll start because yes. I love, I do the recipe side of the house, but the name of our blog is Get to the Root Health and Wellness. And that's Get, G-E-T, the number two, the letter D, root, healthandwellness.com. That's the blog. And that's our Facebook page, uh, Instagram and uh, YouTube. Yeah. And I love to come and share uh, recipes that our family eat on the regular that are whole food plant-based. They're salt-free, oil-free, sugar-free. Um, and my husband also, he's yes. always been more of the uh, athletic one. I'm still trying to get there. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And so, you know, he likes to come and do live workouts on Saturdays where him and I come together and we do in-home uh, routines, um, some high intensity. I'm the modifier. I love to, you know, break it down for those of us who are just getting started. And that's what we love to do, Absolutely. you know, um, sharing recipes, sharing um, in-home workouts. And you can find us at on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We try to help to eliminate any excuses. You know? Most definitely. Yes. So we have our final product here. This Kali knob sits in the refrigerator for a couple of hours at least. I don't know if you can see this or not. Chef AJ, I'm going to bring it up. But here is our Kali knob. And we're going to let everyone get a little sip and tell everybody how it tastes. Yes. Move this out the way. Yes. Go, Thank you, Mom. Like yeah. and subscribe so we can get more subscribes first. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Taste, taste test. Yep. Taste test, guys. Yes. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. I wish you could taste the chef, AJ. Mm. It is creamy. It oh sounds God. amazing. I make one with a Hannah, yeah, but I've never thought about putting cauliflower in, but that will really bump up the creaminess as well as the nutrition. Yes, most mm. definitely. Like I said, I got the idea from you and definitely the nutrition. Um, and we love it. Like I said, we only really drink it during the holidays and um, it is so tasty. And what better way to eat a drink that's full of veggies, right? Mm -hmm. So... Everybody hey, we, oh we, hey, we got some we got some plant based royalty watching Dr. Vanessa Mendez. She says, post the link. I will post the link. I'm working on all the recipes, guys. You'll have it before the end of the show. I'm just trying to format it. Oh, and where well. is where is our um, Katie May says she's waiting to get in. I don't see her, though. Uh -oh. That's weird. Why can't I see her in it's the technology? Uh, you gotta love it and hate it all at the same time. <laughs> no. Well, you guys keep talking while I try to bring Katie May on. This is weird. Oh, I don't see her at all in the waiting room. Yes. I mean, we've never done a multi show before. So, guys, talk about something while I try to get the next guest. I, I like this Kali now because it has the cinnamon flavor. Okay. Mm, yes. all right. What do you like about the drink, Maya? Yeah, I like it because it's very smooth. It's mm. very smooth. Does it taste good? Okay, it's what about really good. It's really, it's really good. good. Yeah. Okay. I see you. What about you, Shane? It just tastes like eggnog to me. It tastes like mm. eggnog. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, then it's the eggnog without the egg. Yes, right? it's very safe. Very That's safe. Right. Wow. And no, and no dairy. And no dairy. No That's dairy. Sure. No yeah. dairy. You know, dairy is scary. Well, you guys yeah. are such an inspiration. Because yes. you not only eat healthy, you eat uber healthy, but your food is delicious. And I hope people will check out your blog because you, you just did a new recipe, like a stuffed pumpkin, didn't you? A stuffed oh. pumpkin and a deep dish apple pie that yes. is uh, sofa's free. And it is also oh good. We have another day for Thanksgiving for sure. Thanks Both the stuffed pumpkin and the... Um, Deep dish apple pie. What so yes, happens? yes. So yes, AJ. So we appreciate you having us. We loved and enjoyed coming today. And yes, I'm going to share with you all what we believe here at Get to the Root, right? We believe yes. that our health is our wealth. Yes. So during this holiday season, let's get to the root of obtaining and sustaining it by what? Eating more plants. All right. Take care. <laughs> Thank you, Scott family. You Thank you so much. Happy Thanksgiving. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs> Bye.
All right, so we have our next guest up and she is a wonderful chef. Her name is Katie May. Katie, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. This is so exciting. I feel like I'm a newscaster, like broadcasting the Olympics of SOS free cooking. So this is Chef Katie May. She is from the Culinary Gym. She's a regular presenter of both the McDougal program and True North. And she is going to be making a side dish for our wonderful Thanksgiving meal. She's going to be making a very special cranberry relish. Take it away, Katie. And why don't you tell us what you're thankful for? So I am so thankful for my health. Just as the Scott family was saying, our health is our wealth. Um, this lifestyle has just transformed my life in every way, but it's actually so much more about health for me. It's about vitality. It's about living the life we want to live, being full of activity and laughter and family and connection. And that doesn't happen when you're not feeling well in your body. So the plant-based diet is just the starting point of living a healthy lifestyle. And it's the most delicious part. So I'm so excited to share this, um, dish with you today we're making a cranberry sauce but not just any cranberry sauce this one has no sugar added it's just sweetened with dates oranges and actually today i'm going to do a special we're going to sweeten it with um, i'm going to add fig instead of just dates a lot of people don't want to use um, dates or as many dates as this calls for it's 10 to 15 dates for about eight ounces of the veg of the cranberries. So let me show you, I already have the cranberries started here. I'm just switching my camera. So I have one package of strawberries going and I'm gonna add my second. Um, I'm actually doing a bigger batch today. So I have about 12 ounces of cranberries and I have a little bit of water in there. I put in about half a cup to a cup of water to start with. Now I'm going to add in some oranges. I'm going to just squeeze in some orange to get some extra juice in here. Katie, is that a salad master pan? This is a salad master pan. I don't, I, they're brand new. Um, just trying them out because I was a fan, a big fan of scan pans. And then I realized that the scan pan is actually nonstick cookware with a different material that we also don't want in our bodies. So I recommend stainless steel cookware for the best price and not to get any of the nonstick uh, to use on a daily basis. But this nonstick cookware scan pan is fantastic for, um, you know, special occasions. You can't do everything in a, just a stainless steel pan, like veggie burgers, pancakes, things like that. So we've got our cranberries and orange in here, and I'm gonna throw in my dates. So this is just diced up deglet dates, but you can use medjool dates, either one. My recipes usually call for medjool dates, so if you are gonna use the deglet, they're a little bit smaller and not as sweet. You wanna add a little more of the deglet than medjool. And we're gonna let this simmer for a little bit. I'm gonna actually need to add a little bit more liquid. So we're gonna do, another orange here. The recipe calls for three oranges. Chef A just shared the recipe with you. Three oranges, two juiced and one whole. Now cranberries are very tart. So you do need a lot of sweetness to offset that tartness from the cranberries. But it's up to you how you add that. It could be all dates, it could be just orange uh, slices or little pieces of orange, which is what we're going to add at the end of this recipe. So I said we're going to do two juiced and then one diced up. But if you'd rather not have the juice, you can just add a whole orange diced up. Don't need to do the juice separately, okay? Because I am really all about whole foods and I do make exceptions by processing some whole foods. Of course, we're doing a minimal processing right now just by cooking the cranberries. But the more we can get our foods closest to how it's found in nature, the more we're going to enjoy the benefits of a, a plant-based diet, a whole food plant-based diet, right? So Absolutely. somebody made a fun comment about you, Katie. It's so cute. It said, wait, where'd it go? She is like a Disney princess chef. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Um, I feel uh, like I should be um, in a little dress, I guess. No, you do. You look adorable today. I like your hair like that. Thank you. 
So we are making, um, this cranberry sauce is a side, but it doesn't matter what you have as your entree this Thanksgiving. This is great over just mashed potatoes. It goes over a lentil loaf, it goes over squash. Anything you're making, this cranberry sauce is an excellent addition because you're, you're making something savory for your entree. Most entrees and sides are gonna be savory and this dish is tart. It's got a little bit of sweetness, but it's got the tartness too. So it's a great complement to the dish. And Chef AJ and I have talked many times about savoriness and nutritional yeast and things like that. Um, and I wanna let you know if that's something you're interested in, developing more savoriness in your dishes, I have a course right now called The Magic of Umami, and it's all about savoriness. But it's actually so much more than that because there's so much, um, there's a big health impact by the savory, the processed savoriness in our food, just like processed sugar, processed sweetness, processed fat, it all contributes to chronic disease. And we don't often think about that when it comes to savory, but it's basically processed protein that's causing the issue. So if you guys are interested and in, um, you feel like you're not losing those extra pounds, you're doing a whole food plant-based diet for the most part, but it feels like you're stuck, there might be a few plant-based culprits that you don't realize are actually um, creating disease in ways that we're not often talking about just through the processed protein. Liliana's watching. She says, thank you. It's so much fun to see you today. She loves your cooking. Oh, thank you. So we're going to add in the figs here. I just have, um, these are the black figs, but you could do any type of fig, Turkish figs, any fig, and it actually rounds up the dish really well instead of just having the dates for sweetness, because dates don't have a lot of flavor, um, a lot like a strong, specific flavor. It's more just a mild sweetness. So when you add in the fig, it really complements the cranberry nicely. Question as to why you squeeze the orange by hand instead of using a tool. <laughs> the, I don't have a tool actually. So that's part of my lifestyle is trying to minimize gadgets. I definitely love, like I have a garlic twist. I love um, gadgets when they make a big difference for me personally, but there's some things where I actually want to use the muscles in my hands, the muscles in my arms. You know, I just like, um, even though it is a little bit more work, I like, I like challenging myself on a daily basis where it doesn't even feel like a challenge just because it's part of my lifestyle. But I'd rather, you know, I'd rather take the stairs than the elevator, something simple like that. But that level of activity in the kitchen, kitchen fitness is what I talk about. This level of activity day to day, whether you're making three meals a day or you're just cooking three times a week, getting into the kitchen helps keep your body active. So aside from all the nutrients in the food, we're actually keeping our bodies moving and helping our, our um, body and mind on so many different levels. So my next orange here, I'm gonna chop up top and bottom. I'm slicing off here, you can see. And then I'm cutting around the side. So we're taking off the membrane the peel because that white part is bitter we don't want that and then i'm just going to chop this in diced pieces now of course everyone's at different um different places in their lifestyle and different um, you know timing in the kitchen what you are able to do so if using a juicer um, is helpful for you to sustain this then by all means please do that that's most important is eating this way so whatever gadgets you use. I saw Chef AJ show a couple, was it yesterday? With um, someone local to your Chef AJ showing all those fancy gadgets to do different things. Oh yeah, I love her store. She, I love gadgets, Katie. Yeah, they make it so much fun, especially like a spiralizer, the mandolin. It's just certain things where it takes out more time to get something out than it does to do it by hand. That's where it's kind of like, uh, it's a toss up. Katie, did you see the machine that I was demonstrating where you can make plant milks and nut butters, the Nutramilk? 
I did not see that episode, but I've seen a couple different versions of that. And that is definitely something I'm getting. What will you make? What kind of milk did you make? Okay. So I, I, I've been making all kinds of flavored milk, but the thing is it's a hundred dollars off for the next four days. So if somebody is going to buy it, this is the time. Um, I've yeah. done, and I interviewed the CEO. It's really fun, especially people that eat nut butters because they, they can be so expensive and they, you make them yourself, but I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with the machine because it's also a, a food processor. So I'm using it instead of my cuisine art because it has these wiper blades. I don't have to stop and start to wipe. It's pretty cool. That is fantastic. A, a nut milk maker is something that was definitely on my list. So what's the brands that you're talking about? Nutra milk. It's, it's pretty cool because I know you do a lot of prep, so I think you'll like it. So Carol, hi Carol, by the way, what is the cookware you mentioned? You are using the actual, is it waterless cookware or is it salad master? It is Salad Master Cookware. Um, Salad Master Cookware is made with surgical steel. So it's a high level, uh, high grade material that would actually be in our bodies. They use it in surgeries um, to replace, you know, hip joints and things like that. So it's a great quality, but um, it's something I'm trying out and I'm going to be uh, kind of doing a webinar about cookware and things like that to talk about the different qualities of different cookware, it's expensive, but it lasts for decades. So if you're interested, get it. If, uh, if it's too expensive though, salad, um, just a stainless steel cookware. I recommend commercial kitchen um, stores because they're so cheap and high quality cookware for getting different gadgets. If you don't have somewhere awesome like Chef AJ's local culinary store, um, restaurant supply stores are great. So we have, Let's take a look at our cranberry sauce here cooking down. Remember I had the first batch of cranberries already in and then we just added the second batch. You can see that first batch is really starting to, um, it's like a little, like applesauce. It's just breaking down and you've got a nice cranberry. And by adding them at separate times, you have some pieces that are whole still. So we're just gonna let this go a little bit longer. If you want this to be a cranberry sauce where it's really creamy or an even consistency like you might get out of a can. Um, we don't want canned cranberry sauce, but if you did want that, you could use an immersion blender just to break all of the, the cranberries up. Um, I like a lot of texture here. So you see I added that last orange diced up and then we have some cinnamon and actually the cinnamon is best to add ahead of time. I'm gonna sprinkle some cinnamon in to add earlier on so that it really infuses into the dish. And this cinnamon is a nice warming spice, so it offsets the tart cranberry as well. So we don't want to add all of the sugar in traditional cranberries, so it helps in a traditional cranberry sauce, so it helps to have a few different ingredients added here. Our last one is going to be, I'm going to turn off the heat now. Hey, Katie, I have a question that I'm not sure I have the answer to from Melanie. Do food safety rules apply to whole food plant-based foods? You know, the rules that say to put food away in the fridge within two hours, or is that just for meat-based foods? You know, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts, but I think it depends on what you're talking about. If you're, if you're making something where it's, um, there's a fermentation happening, like cheese, a nut cheese, there is a level of uh, warmth that you actually want. You want to leave it out to a certain extent to develop that bacteria. But if you leave it out for too long, then you've got the bad bacteria growing. So in that case, it's really important that you're paying attention to whether it's out or not. But aside from that, for the most part, I think we can actually um, be a little more lax about those food regulations because we don't have the level of bacteria from animal products in the food. So if you're going camping, or during these big dinner parties, if you have family over, you're just making a lot and it doesn't fit in the fridge or timing and it, uh, you'd rather leave it out. Like I actually did last night. I made a big um, two batches of lentil loaf and I left it out. I did not put it in the fridge because I didn't want to have to reheat it from a, a cold temperature. I just thought that would dry it out too much. So I did leave it out. Um, but I'm not a, you know, I'm not... <laughs> certified in regulations like that. So I don't want to cause any disease or anything, but I think for the most part, um, leaving it out a little bit is not a big deal. Thank but, you. Mm -hmm. So I have my last ingredient here, fresh mint. I was just chopping up some mint and I'm gonna to toss this in our sauce. The fresh mint added to the cranberry adds a fantastic freshness 
that just brightens up the dish. And it actually adds a really nice color as well. You can see this. It's beautiful. Color. And you add the orange, that last bit of orange and the mint at the end so that it doesn't cook too much. And now you can just serve it warm if you'd like or put it in the fridge and let it cool. And then you'll have this ready to go whenever you're, you're serving up everything else we're making today, the big feast. But this is definitely a favorite and don't wait until the Thanksgiving, to the holiday time to make cranberry sauce because it's such a fantastic addition to a plant-based diet in general, that, that tanginess. You know, we don't have a lot of uh, traditional options for tang and tartness like we do, um, you know, all the aged cheeses and everything. So cranberry sauce is an excellent condiment that is you know, not talked about much during the rest of the year, but I think it's a great addition anytime. You know what cranberry sauce is good on? Oatmeal. Oh, yes. Yeah, especially, yeah, this time of the year too. So um, I wanted to uh, let you guys know that I have a Black Friday special happening. Uh, we are getting 40% off my courses. If you're interested in buying um, a cooking course, I am starting my new year. December 1st. I don't wait until January 1st anymore because one holiday, one rich holiday is enough for me. So December 1st is, uh, is my new year. I'm basically making this the best December yet. If you guys want to join and start in with just going deeper into the plant-based lifestyle, or if you're just getting started and you want a foundational course, or if you're looking for more flavor in your dishes, or you want a quick and easy option, I have a core meal class as well. So there's lots of options at theculinarygym.com. Um, please check it out if you're interested in learning more. But Chef AJ's little extra, I thought of this as the extravaganza this year, Chef AJ. Instead of True North's extravaganza we do in December, this feels like our alternative virtual extravaganza. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the, the uh, recipes. And chefs. That was amazing. Thank you so much. And it wasn't a very complicated recipe. Oh, so simple. It's so simple. And you can make a big batch, make it ahead of time. You could even freeze it if you want to, because once you, um, when you thaw it out, just put it back on the stovetop and you've got a good consistency pretty quickly. Oh, well, Nancy wanted to know what kind of nice knife you were using. I have a ceramic knife here, um, but I actually just dropped it. So ceramic knives are very sharp. They're sharper than um, a lot of knives. And so I love it, but they're also very delicate. And I just was out, I was doing my cooking show yesterday and I, I think I knocked the camera and it dropped. So the little edge just broke off. So it's still sharp, but we lost the tip. You know, I, I forgot to ask the Scott family this, but I'll make sure I answer, ask every other chef that's coming on. What are you making for your main meal? Yes. So I have a lentil loaf, savory lentil loaf. I just made the recipe yesterday. If anyone is watching and wants it, um, email me. I, I can't promise how soon it will come, but if you email support at the culinary gym, I'll get you the recipe. And mashed potatoes, a big batch of mashed potatoes, along with a mushroom gravy. And Brussels sprouts, I'm gonna do a twist on my Brussels sprouts with apples and pecans. You can find that recipe on the website, but I'm gonna actually do a twist by putting the Brussels sprouts in the air fryer. So it, should, it will definitely be a feast. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Well, thank you for sharing part of your day for us. And I'm just so thankful for, for chefs like you that make healthy food delicious without all the sugar, oil, and salt. So thank you, Katie. I look forward to you. I know you have your own episode coming back in December where you're going to be doing a, a whole meal or something. Yes, we're going to we're gonna be on together in a couple weeks. Great. Can't wait to see you. You thank look you, great. Thanks, Thanks so thank much, Katie. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And now moving on to the entree, we're not really going in order of the meal because Chef Bravo is actually working at True North today and we had to move some things around, but we have another extraordinary SOS free chef. You already probably know her and love her. Her name is Tammy Kramer. She's the wife of Tom Kramer, who hopefully will make a cameo. They are from <laughs> Nutmeg Notebook. They are just delightful. I call her the Martha Stewart of veganism. She has so much class and just, she just is so elegant. She's everything that I want to be when I grow up and she's going to be making her famous lentil loaf with date glaze that just appeared in a wonderful magazine with color photos. Please welcome Tammy Kramer. Thank you for being here. And what are you thankful for? 
Hi, I'm so happy to be here, Chef AJ, and happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Um, well, I am thankful for so many things. Uh, health, great health, uh, my family, everybody is healthy right now. We are COVID free, we're excited about that. Uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm thankful that I get to be here with you today. And, um, you know, life is great, so I'm ready. Yay. Okay, so I'm making the lentil loaf with date glaze. And in the interest of saving time, of course, I've already had to prep some things. But if you got your ingredient list, you will take the onion, the celery, the carrot, and the garlic. And I like to saute it in the Instant Pot. Um, it just makes things easy. This is my little three quart. And just turn it to saute, throw those in there. They only need to saute them for about three to four minutes. And we're just trying to take that raw out of those ingredients. And then you're going to add the water and the lentils, put the uh, lid on, put it to sealing, and you're going to set it for high pressure, 12 minutes with natural pressure release. And so I've already done that. And this is what we get then, the lentils and all the veggies are nicely cooked and they're soft. And that's just the beginning. And so we're going to put these in the food processor. Now, of course, you can do this in your six quart or your eight quart. You can do smaller volumes in your bigger pots. You just can't do bigger volumes in these smaller pots. So I'm gonna hand that off to Tom. And Tom, Chef AJ said maybe you would make a cameo appearance today. So maybe you wanna come on and say hi. So right now, I'm just going to put these. Is this my good side? <laughs> this side or this side? Yeah, honey, you look good on all sides. Hello, everybody. Enjoy. Uh, so he's going to be behind the camera today so that he can um, do some close-ups for us. So you just want to use your S blade, which is the, you know, the standard one that we're always using. And then I have all of the dry ingredients here too. So I have the, um, the lentils, the water, the rolled oats, the tomato, I'm gonna add tomato paste, the golden flax seed and the Italian seasoning, table tasty. If you don't have it, it's okay. It just adds a little bit of, it's a, a salt substitute and a little bit of smoked paprika. So I'm gonna add that in. And this is just a really simple, recipe. Okay, the sun-dried tomatoes, and I get these at Trader Joe's, but Whole Foods also has them. And then a little bit of tomato paste, just a couple tablespoons. And you're going to have some tomato paste left over when you make this recipe. You know, it comes in a six ounce can. And so what I do is I just portion out the leftovers into tablespoon sizes, put them in a freezer bag and just freeze them. So I'll have it later, you know, if I just need a couple tablespoons. And then the balsamic vinegar, and this is just a regular balsamic. This is just the one from um, Costco. So we have all of that in there, and then we're just going to process it. And we don't want it to turn to mush, but we want it to be fully processed. Sorry, it's gonna be noisy, but maybe Maybe it'll cut it out. I lost my earbud. Okay, and I like to process it just enough so that, I'm gonna show you, so that the oats get incorporated, the tomatoes get incorporated, but everything's not creamy smooth. You see, it's still got some texture to it because I like the lentil loaf to have a little bit of texture. So let me move my processor out of the way. And then let's talk about the pan. So I have, this is a nine by five um, loaf pan and it's a silicone loaf pan, which is great when you're doing the no fat cooking because everything comes out of it so beautifully. But don't worry, if you don't have one, you can use a regular pan. So this one happens to be eight and a half by four and you could still use this. I would just, it's gonna be a thicker um, one and so I would just bake it a little longer. And what I've done is I've just cut some parchment paper so I have a strip going the long way and then a strip to go across it. 
and then you just push them down. You want to leave the end long because that gives you something to lift the loaf out with when it's done cooking, and it just makes it really easy. So you can use whatever pan you have. That's a very it, clever tip. It works so good, so good, because sometimes you don't have, you know, silicone pans in all the um, same sizes as your regular pans. Okay, so then we just want to get our mixture out and put it in our pan. And you're going to preheat your oven to 375. And I'm having a terrible time with these earbuds. Okay. And we'll just put this in here and use a spatula to spread it out thin, to spread it out evenly. So it is important that we have it even because we want it to look pretty when it's all done and we want it to bake evenly all the way across. Tammy, that is your color. Your thank blue. You. Oh, thank you so much, AJ. I love this. I wish I could find more tops in this color. Yeah, I that is, uh, you know, uh, um, Elspeth, who's the last chef of the day, uh, contact her. She finds me the greatest clothes and uh, I know. try, try, where try. Does um, she, she's where been getting, she buy them? I don't know. She bought me like <laughs> Boston proper and Venus, but I have seen that color and she got me, a, that is a spectacular color on you. Okay, well, I need to contact Elspeth and ask her where to where she's shopping because your tops have been so cute. I know, I really got an upgrade thanks to her. And because and, you know what, the thing is, I didn't want to hurt people's feelings. People give me t-shirts and I love that they give me t-shirts, but I don't wear t-shirts. So right. what I did is I took all the t-shirts that people have been gifting me and it's being made into a quilt. Oh, there's a company that. that does it. So I'll be able to still have the memory of the gift and use it, but just, I won't feel like I have to wear it when I'm just not a t-shirt person. Yeah, and I'm not a t-shirt person either. So I totally get that and understand it. And if we lived closer, we could share clothes. Wouldn't that be? No, we're the same size. Isn't that great? I know. We would share, we would share clothes. Well, you what? have worn my clothes when you have visited. I know. Actually. And then you ended up giving me the pants, remember? I did. I <laughs> so did. Nice. You're so, you guys, if you get a chance to go to Sacramento, stay at Tammy's house. It is like the best bed and breakfast ever. I mean, she, I mean, every chef I have on today is the, is the best in my opinion. I've had all their food. The thing is, is she makes a lot and she does this batch cooking thing. You've got to check it out and not make notebooks. So it's like, you, you don't have to spend a lot of time because the food's like pretty much already made. You just have to like, just grab what you want. Yep. It's like, it's like amazing. I love to batch cook. Okay, Tom's saying you've got it smooth enough. I'm really picky. Okay, so then here is the fun part is the date glaze. And so, and I have the, you got the um, recipe. So it's balsamic vinegar, it's date paste, and a little bit of tomato paste. And then you just use a fork or a little wire whisk to um, make it all nice and creamy and smooth. And I find that this is plenty, but if you really like a lot of sauce, you could double it. Um, but this is plenty for us because we don't eat a lot of sweet and it, it is sweet. And if you don't have a recipe for date paste, you can go to my blog, nutmegnotebook.com, and I have a video and a recipe for you on how to make date paste. And if you have Chef AJ's books, she has date paste recipes in her book as well. And it's super easy to make. It's a wonderful natural sweetener and um, you get all the health benefits of the whole fruit. And it's just, it's wonderful. And then I just like to spread this out and try to do it evenly. I like the offset spatula that I learned about from you, AJ, but it, like, there's not they're great. They're like $7 in at Walmart. They really, you know, sometimes these little tools can really make a difference, especially in presentation. They can. It just doesn't work good in this um, loaf pan. The loaf pan, it's kind of like too deep or something. I'm not sure what. Yeah. But anyway, anyway I, I just want to thank everybody for watching. You know, some of the people, it's so funny when people complain about I'm free so glad stuff. People are with us today. Oh my yeah, we've got like over 400. And the thing is, is and that's great for a holiday. A lot of people complain like, why are you doing it on the holiday? We want the recipes before. This is not about recipes. This is about community. And many of my followers are people that are completely alone on the holiday. They haven't seen their families in nine months. They're older people. They are alone. And they are so thankful that they have this show because we're 
you know, they, it's like having family. So it's not about the recipes. You'll get the rest. recipes are already in YouTube. That's why I like YouTube better than Facebook. I can't put them in Facebook, but they're there. Go look at uh, YouTube. Uh, and, and I only get 5,000 characters. So the recipes that are linked to blog posts, I link to it. I couldn't type everything in, but it's there. And June says, is date paid healthier than maple syrup? Absolutely. Oh, because it's yes. a whole, you can tell why. I feel like anything I know, you know. So why is date no, paste you healthier? Well, no, because no, it's, it, it's because your show. It has Date paste has everything in it. It has the fiber in it. Nothing has been um, taken from it. It's not highly processed. So you're getting the whole date. It's just dates and a little bit of water. And the maple syrup is highly processed. So it takes like gallons of sap to be cooked down to create the syrup. And so, and that's just a highly concentrated um, amount of sugar basically. So we have it in here. We have the date paste spread, the glaze spread over the top. And then I just cover it with foil. And no worries, the foil is not touching the food if you're worried about the aluminum. And then I just crimp it around the edge. You're going to put it in the oven. You're going to let it bake for 20 minutes. And then take the lid, the uh, foil off and let it bake for another 10. And so this just helps keep it nice and moist. Um, and so it won't dry out because you don't want to dry lentil loaf. And then of course, I made one ahead this morning so that I could show you what it looks like. There Cammie, we are. That is beautiful. It looks like meatloaf. It is so yummy, AJ. And so, and it cuts beautifully. The problem with a lot of lentil loaves is that they're usually soft and mushy and they fall apart. But look at this, this stays together. And I tell you, it is so scrumptious. It really is. And a lot of people have been writing to me and telling me that they like to make sandwiches out of the leftovers and husbands like this. And I can tell you that even people who follow the standard American diet like this. I have served it at um, Thanksgiving and other people who don't eat like we do love it. So you probably need to make two if you're serving like more than uh, four to six people, but it freezes beautifully Are there too. Samples? Are there samples? Is that for, or is that Thanksgiving dinner? No, you for... can have a sample. Do you want a bite? Well, let me cut you off a bite. Is hey, there Tom, a Tom. We got to have a taste test, Here. right? Yeah. Tom, do you have a favorite Tammy recipe? Looks like Thanksgiving. She wants to know if you have a favorite Tammy recipe. Mm, whatever she's cooking today is my favorite <laughs> recipe. Nice. Well, I thought you were going to say Tammy's my favorite dish. Oh, well, you set him up for it and he blew it, right? Okay, so so you know I can't eat legumes. What can I do to make this loaf? It mush, what can I do? Well, you could probably use um, mushrooms instead of uh, the lentils. Maybe you could use mushrooms and uh, and a little bit of eggplant maybe instead maybe, of... Maybe black rice? I don't know. Yeah, you could try. You could try that. That would be good. I'll I'll think about that. I came up with that sausage for you without yeah. beans, so you could have that. That's a great so, idea. Melanie says, Tammy, what temperature is the lentil loaf best served at? Oh well, I like to I like to serve it hot out of the oven. So, but as you can see, Tom just took a bite, a piece, and it was delicious. And it it's room temperature right now, and and I don't mind eating it cold either. I'll tell you. So I can take a piece and cut it up and put it on top of a salad, um, and it's good like that as well. But if I was serving it for Thanksgiving dinner, which we will be tonight, we will heat this up, and then I'll be making the other one, and and um, and it freezes really well too. So, so I hope you guys um, will try it and enjoy it, and you can double the recipe, and you can. Uh, freeze one if you want, because I think if you're going to all the work to get everything dirty in your kitchen, that you should work smarter, not harder. And so I always suggest that everyone double the recipes when you're making them and then freeze things ahead for a quick and easy, what Tom calls our fast food. So were you going to show a picture of how I serve it, Tom? Yeah, well, I just did. Oh, you did. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, yes. my God. So, just okay. Talk so that it'll be maximized talk. You okay, talk. so this is what, what we serve with it is my garlic mashed potatoes, and that is my cranberry chutney, 
and then oven roasted Brussels sprouts with butternut squash and a pomegranate glaze. And we just published all of those recipes on our YouTube channel and on the blog this past week. Oh my God, so, Tammy, that food looks amazing. I mean, I know all your food tastes amazing, but that looks unbelievable. Well, thank you. Well, that's what we're having for dinner tonight. So we wish everyone could come over. So if you go to nutmegnotebook.com um, and subscribe, we have some recipes that will be sent to you that are just for subscribers. And one is our curry ginger butternut squash soup. And I have that going also for today. And, um, and then there's some other recipes that you'll also get. And the only way to get them is to subscribe to the blog. And of course that is free to subscribe. And then on Sundays, we won't be on live this Sunday because we need a break. So we're taking Sunday off, but most Sundays at 4 p.m. Pacific time, you can find us on our YouTube channel called Nutmeg Notebook. And we sometimes do interviews or we have a topic or or sometimes we do an open Q&A where people can ask us all about a um, plant-based lifestyle. Yeah, you did great. It's a fun, fun channel, guys, and you, you're going to love them. Thank you so much. I know that you had family and it was, you know, not, not as, it was a little difficult to do this day, but I really, really appreciate it because it wouldn't be an SOS-free Thanksgiving without you. Well, thank you, AJ. I appreciate it. I hope everyone has a beautiful, safe, and healthy holiday. Yeah. Did we ask Tom what he's thankful for? Tom, what are you thankful for? It's gotta be Tammy. Again, wants to know what you're thankful for. I'm thankful for a whole food plant-based lifestyle to help improve the quality of life and the length of life and the companionship in life in our common mission. Well, uh, Tom, Thomas Allen right. wishes you both happy uh, what, Thanksgiving. Oh, thank you guys so much okay. for what you do. You guys are amazing. Oh, thank you, AJ. And we appreciate all the support and guidance that you've given us and you've been, um, a huge source of encouragement for me to do this because people may not realize that I'm an introvert and actually so is Chef AJ. But because of her support and encouragement, um, I was able to overcome that and be able to have um, a YouTube channel and to, to be able to speak in front of people. But so you don't know this, AJ. but I'm pushing you, you. I haven't told you this, but I'm pushing you to the next level because you are going to be doing something that's going to make you uncomfortable, but it's going to be very lucrative. And you'll get an email to find out where I'm oh pushing my you gosh. next. <laughs> don't See, cause I'm stressed today. I, I, I'm the, I, I like to think of myself as the Don King of vegan. And I love Love to just promote wonderful people like you. So outstanding recipes, standing ovation. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving as we bring in, just say goodbye and then I'll bring on the next chef. Okay. Bye. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, that you guys have to try that recipe. Now we have another outstanding SOS free chef and I adore her voice. She just, I just think you have the cutest voice I have ever heard. She's been on the show before. Her name is Carol Levy. She's all the way from New York and she does some of the not only best tasting, but the most beautiful SOS free food. And she's going to be making a pear and delicata squash salad. Please welcome Carol Levy. Thank you, Carol, for being here. And what are you thankful for? Oh, thank you. I'm thankful for you, first of all. I'm very thankful for you. And wait, wait, wait a second. Oh, there you are. Now you're showing up. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Are we there? <laughs> yeah. You, 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 I was hearing you, but not seeing you. So you're thankful for me. Well, thank you for yes, being I'm thankful. I'm thankful for you. And I'm thankful, honestly, I'm thankful always and every day for the farmers because I actually try to eat seasonally and I buy locally and I'm always grateful for just having the farmers <laughs> and getting to know them and the, and the crops that they, you know, grow and, and I try to eat as seasonally as possible. So we are going to start with having a squash, a delicata, which is one of my very favorites and delicata squash actually lives up to its actual name. It's called delicata because it's one of those, it's one of the only squashes that you actually can eat its skin. Okay. So, so I'm going to cut this in half. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm just going to cut it in half and it's pretty easy to cut in half like that. Okay. And this is what you end up with. And um, I'm gonna take out the seeds. And the best way to do that is I just get a bowl. I don't let them go onto my cutting board. And I get a big tablespoon and I just scrape out the center, okay? And 
And the other thing that we should do, actually, while we're talking, is we always should preheat our oven. So we're going to roast these delicata squashes. So let me just get the oven preheated while I'm talking to you. And we're going to get this on to 425 degrees. That's 400, 425. That's the temperature that you would normally uh, um, roast things. Okay, so we're going to take these seeds out. And I would not throw out these seeds. Actually, there's a lot of stringy pulp, but if you're patient and you put them in a colander and you separate out the seeds, you actually can eat these seeds um, as toppings of salads or just as a snack. Um, you can roast them in the oven with some spices and they're full of protein and fiber. So this is something, it might appear to you as garbage, this, these seeds, but it's not. Um, and I'm just going to put that on the side here. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna have a sheet pan, okay? And we are going to have a sheet pan and I'm lining it with a piece of parchment. If you have a silk mat, you could put a silicone mat down. And we are gonna just cut these uh, half squashes. I'm gonna turn them upside down and we are gonna cut them so that they're approximately a half an inch, okay? And the end, you always have to just cut off that little end and then I cut them so that they're half, they look like half moons, okay? And those are, we're gonna serve them like that on the salad. Um, and so I'm just gonna cut a few. I have some in the oven as we're speaking because we're on, you know, a time deadline. So, but this is what you end up with. I just wanna show you. Uh, anyway, so here is this, okay? So I'm going to put this on, I'm gonna put this on the sheet pan while we're talking. I'm just gonna show you how to line them up. Gonna just show you really quickly here how to do. Now my recipe calls for two of these squashes and it depends, sometimes they're a little bit larger. This is a large one actually. And I'm just gonna, these ends are gonna go here. Now, normally when people roast things, they often tend to want to oil the pan, okay? And oiling the pan is something that we don't do when we're not eating oil. So I have learned that there are two different ways of roasting. I use two different methods. One, I often use orange juice as a way of putting moisture onto the, whatever I'm roasting, or sometimes I use aqua fava. So that's the can, the, the liquid that's in the, the can of beans. And that also helps the browning. So this is what we have here right now. We have a, a big, a tray full of this. And we're gonna squeeze this with orange juice. And I just wanna show you, before I squeeze and open my orange, I just show you that I have an orange here. And I kind of figured this out today. I figured out a little technique today. This is a microplane zester. And when um, I, I put it in this little ramekin here, and actually by just pulling the zester towards me and turning the orange, it kind of allows me to get the zest off. This is something the salad doesn't actually call for any zest, but I like always zesting any of my citrus ahead of time. And I just, because I feel like don't throw away the skin because the skin actually making the zest could go into something else. This could go onto my oatmeal in the morning, you know? So I kind of just invented this little technique of it staying in the ramekin and I turn and rotate kind of like a globe, kind of like if you had the world in your hands and you're just rotating, okay? You're, you're, that's a, that's fabulous. I love this. Good idea. I just came up with this today and I thought, oh, well, why didn't I think of this ahead of time? And then you just have all this zest here and then you always have to kind of bang it out. So that's, we're not using that today. We can add that into our salad, but this is very delicious for any other day at any other time. Okay. Now I go into cutting my orange. Okay. And I have just a, a juicer to get the juice out. I could also do it with my hands, but I have a good juicer here that allows me just to get the juice. And once I get this juice out, when I'm, oh, you know, I always, um, later on I open this up and I eat all that fiber, you know, it's like, I never throw that out either. But basically we have the juice here and we just wanna put the some sprinkling of juice onto the squash. Okay, that's it. 
just a little bit, okay? Just to pat it. And we're gonna save this rest of this juice for later for the dressing, okay? So let's just move that over here for the, because we're done doing that. And I wanna show you that then for extra flavor, what I like to do is I like to put a little bit of cinnamon on the top, okay, of the squash before it goes into the oven. Okay, so here's the cinnamon. And you could do it one of two ways. You could do it this easy way where you just kind of just do it like this, okay, and dust it all out. Or if you have a little teeny uh, little mesh colander, um, I always kind of put it off to the side because as soon as you put something in there, and then you could just lightly dust it, okay? Just if you want to do it that way. I usually use just my hands and you don't want to give it a ton of cinnamon. The cinnamon's just there for dusting, okay? And then you end up, and you, you'll have a little bit of cinnamon left on your plate over here and that will go back into this jar, okay? But for now, that is our squash that has to go into the oven, okay? And that is going into the oven. And I am going to take out the squash that we already have made. And I will show you how beautiful it comes out. Carol, do you mind answering a couple of questions about the squash? First sure. of all, show you Gina for a super chat. That's beautiful. Okay, and you see it's brown and crispy. And I want you to understand that you can eat the whole thing. See, you can eat the skin and everything. So your questions, AJ. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, first of all, just thank you, Gina, for the super chat. And also, uh, Gina said, like, if you were just going to make the squash, not necessarily for the salad, what spices would you recommend? And someone else asked, how long would you toast the seeds? And hey, Wendy Sachs, Wendy, you inspired me. I'm no longer dyeing my hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, the seeds probably take, well, you have to wash them, right? You have to wash them and then spread them um, one layer, you know, on a sheet pan, a big sheet pan like this. And then probably at least 25 to 30 minutes on a 400 degree oven. And what was your other question, AJ? Oh, uh, oh Gina, Gina said if you were just going to have, I see, I wouldn't put any spices on the squash. I think it's delicious as it is. But if you were going to spice it, if you weren't making the I salad. Guess, I think I, I have, I like things spicy, you know, I think Spanish, uh, Spanish uh, paprika, uh, a smoked paprika would be good. Any, sometimes people have combination of spices, like I have a carnita spice and there's, you could do anything that you want because, but the squash is so delicious and so sweet on its own. It almost needs nothing. Um, and so I agree with you, AJ, but you can, you can put other spices on if you'd like. Even cumin seed would be delicious. But let's move on. Is there any other questions? Not right now, but people right. love how you use all the parts of the plant. And, and they, she agrees, Nancy, that she's very thankful for the farmers. <laughs> so I wanted to show you that this is so beautiful and we have probably maybe more than we need, but it's good. The, ne the next thing that I also have on the stove is pe pecans. And those are getting roast roasted in the pan. And I'm just gonna set those over there. And we have a couple other things that are going into this salad, okay? We have scallions, chopped scallions, two or three. And in case you, you know, want to know what they look like whole, they look like this. And I've just chopped up. And this is about three to four scallions are almost a half a cup. We're also going to have pomegranates, okay? And pomegranates are really delicious. And we have... Uh, a whole pomegranate here. And if we have time at the end, I can show you how to de-seed a pomegranate, but there are plenty of videos online. And then we're going to cut up our pear, okay? So I have a couple of, these are Bosque pears, but it really doesn't matter if you use, there's so many different kinds of pears that you can use. And I'm just taking out the, um, the core, the part that is the center, the core where the seed is, okay? And we're just going to really nicely slice those and we want to have two actual cups of, uh, we're gonna do two pairs, not two cups, but two pairs, okay? And we're just slicing these and we'll put together the salad in a very few minutes. I have mixed greens that I got, um, which are quite beautiful. Um, they're here and I, one of the one of the greens that I actually bought yesterday was this beautiful head of lettuce. I just want to show everyone like this is Boston red leaf lettuce, but it was so beautiful. And then I mixed it with a bunch of other greens because it's kind of nice to have different sweet lettuces and sour lettuce. And I'm just going to cut this pear 
Okay, and our dressing is fairly simple, but let's just get the last pair done. I think I'll use this Bosque pair. These are washed. They're a little bit firm, but they're also a little bit ripe. Um, I tend to buy a lot of pears ahead of time because it seems that they're always not ripe, but then they all get ripe at the same time. So um, I just give, get this sliced. And Carol, there's a question. How long can you keep orange zest in the refrigerator? And Becky oh, says, when you cook the squash, did you ever flip it? Three to five days. Um, three to five days, I would say. That's what I'm estimating. Mine seems to disappear really quickly because I because when you're not using salt, one of the ways that I bring up flavor is using zest. So I use I tend to use that often and it disappears. But I guess I would say three to five days. Great. It's Teresa says, don't forget the pecans on the stove. Yeah. Oh, and then the nuts are on the stove and I can't forget those. Thank you for mentioning the stove. And, and, and Fa Fa Fabian wants to know, are you roasting the nuts in a cast iron pan? I am. I actually am, but you can roast them any way you want. You can roast them in your oven, on a sheet pan. You can roast them in any kind of pan you want and you don't even have to roast them. The reason you roast things is it brings out the flavor so that it's stronger. Okay, so we are almost ready just to make our salad. I want to get everything in the bowl and I'm going to put, I'm going to put six handfuls, what, like, well, maybe just four because I have big handfuls. Usually one big handful feeds a normal person's salad, but when you're eating uh, a, a whole food plant-based lifestyle, I could eat this much salad myself. So my old rules of one handful per person is really kind of goes out the window because I eat a lot of salad. Okay, so these pears are gonna go on top. Okay, we'll kind of get those mixed in and th run throughout. Okay, we need both pears. Okay, we also need these scallions. We're gonna put these scallions on top. Okay, everything has to eventually just get mixed in. And then we're going to, we're gonna put some of these, but we're gonna leave them for mostly the top. Okay, and then we're going to get our squash here. And this is gonna go on top and throughout. And I like to put some things in the bottom, you know, and arrange things so they're decorative on the top. Okay, and we could put a little bit of the orange zest. It's certainly not going to hurt it. Okay, that's that's good. Okay, and let me just get to the dressing and then we're done. It's a simple salad and we're going to chop the nuts as well. Okay, so let me get this chop the chopped nuts and get this on the counter here and get these nuts chopped and if you didn't have pecans you could obviously substitute with walnuts if you're allergic to nuts don't use nuts it's just that the thanksgiving is you know always about the pecans and the hazelnuts you could easily swap your favorite kind of nut okay so i'm just roughly chopping these okay and then we're going to make the quick dressing and the dressing takes but a few very few, few seconds okay? your food is so beautiful so we're going to get the dressing and the dressing consists of, I'll tell you, the dressing consists of three tablespoons of orange juice. And we've already squeezed our orange and we have to get a tablespoon and we're going to put three tablespoons. So we're going to go one and two and three. That's three tablespoons. And then we need two tablespoons of uh, rice wine vinegar. And I just want to show you that I have two kinds of rice wine vinegar. One is a regular genuine brood, which, and then there's another one that's called lightly seasoned. And if you buy lightly seasoned, just be very careful because this has a little bit of sugar in it. So I tend to use this one, but um, this one does exist. So I just want you to know. So we're putting two tablespoons. I'm using the one that doesn't have any sugar because we don't need sugar because the delicata squash is sweet. The orange juice that we're making the dressing is sweet. So I measured two tablespoons. And then I also have a tablespoon here of ginger that I've already chopped, okay? And that's fresh ginger, okay? And then I like to put a little bit of, um, of cumin seed on the top and a little bit, I put a little cayenne just to give it a little bit of little bit of hotness, okay? Just a tiny, tiny bit of cayenne. And then a little bit of, of cumin. And 
and I, it's about a fourth, a little bit, i say about a fourth of a teaspoon. I'm not measuring, I'm just putting it in. Okay, and that, and I, then that is our dressing. Okay, so let me just get this moved, get this moved a little bit. I wanna be able to bring the salad a little closer to me. Okay, and we're gonna get the nuts here. And we're gonna put this dressing on top. Okay, we're just gonna put all of that dressing on top. Now I like to mix it, my hands are clean. I like mixing everything with my hands. Okay, everything so that dressing is throughout. Um, this is a salad that looks fantastic. I, you want to have try to let things come back to the top because every single thing is going to fall to the bottom because of the weight of the pears, the weight of the thing. And you want to just try to bring everything back to the top. So that's why I then put the nuts on. Okay, the nuts go on the top. Okay, and then the pomegranates, a big handful of the pomegranates. Okay, and then maybe just a few extra little squashes. And that's pretty much our dish right here. That's our salad, really simple. And uh, roasted delicata squash and pear salad. That is gorgeous. Thank you so much. And there was a question from Becky when you were roasting the delicata. Did you ever flip it? I did actually flip it, but you don't really have to. I think it's just a step that I say to do, but honestly, both sides really do get brown if you don't flip it. I did flip this earlier, in the, but you don't have to. But it, it's so delicious and it cooks in like 25 minutes. It's pretty fast. And it's nice tasting because it's got that little bit of cinnamon and it's got that little bit of orange juice. So um, I love it so much. Now tell us where we can find out more about you and follow you. And I know you have your own entire episode. You're coming back next month to cook for us again, yes. but where can people coming, learn more about you? Coming back to your show on Saturday, December 12th. And you can find more about me. My company is called the, the Veggie Vanguard. And that's, uh, and I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. And you can write to me uh, at carol at the veggievanguard.com. That's terrific. Thank you so much. And very happy. What are you going to have for your dinner other than that? Anything I'm else? I believe this, but I'm having Indian dinner. I made chana masala and I'm having cauliflower naan. <laughs> I'm kind of having an Indian um, uh, non-traditional Thanksgiving because I, I got these really amazing uh, chana beans, these Desi chana beans. I'm part of a bean club. And I was so excited when they arrived the other day. I was like, okay, my main dish has to be chana masala. So that's what I'm having. Well, that sounds amazing. Thank you so much. And you're, you're just such a wonderful addition to the SOS free Thanksgiving. Thank you so much, Carol, and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, everyone. Have a happy Thanksgiving. See you soon. So our next extraordinary SOS free chef, Shada, if you're ready, you can um, you can put your camera on so we can get started. So we have the course is now going to be the stuffing course. And so it is going to be a wild rice and cauliflower stuffing made by none other than my dear friend, Shada June, better known as Shada Soleimani from Healthy Cooking with Shada. Please make sure you go to her website and subscribe and subscribe to her YouTube channel. And Shada, how you doing? I'm doing great, honey, AJ. Doing <laughs> wow, that looks beautiful, your setup. Thank you so much for doing this on the holiday. What What are you making? And well, first of all, what are you thankful for? Well, I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my friends. I thank you to you, actually, for getting me on this plant-based journey. And I'm really thankful for this plant-based movement because I got my health back. And I can't be more thankful for me, my mom, and my family to have our health. That's the most important thing. So very thankful. Wow. Well, you look great, and I can't wait to see what you have in store for us today. Well, this is my this is my stuffing that um, I've always made. It's probably about, but I've had to revamp it because back in the day, I did use a lot of nuts and seeds and a lot of dried fruit. It was always vegetarian, but I did have oil in here, so I've done away with all that. Um, so I'm excited to share this with you, and I'm sure you guys all have the ingredient list. So. Um, in order to save a little bit of time, I've gone ahead and, and I've done some stuff. I've already cooked and I have five cups of wild rice here. And it's really easy to make wild rice, especially if you've got the Instant Pot. And if you've got the Instant Pot, it's three cups of wild rice to four cups of water. You just push that multigrain button 
and you call it a day. You walk away from it and you let the pressure come down naturally and voila, you've got some beautiful wild rice in no time at all. So the recipe calls for onions and celeries and butternut squash and all that to get sauteed. And I've gone ahead in order to save time and I've done that for you guys. So here it is. Everything's been sauteed all without any water because you can let the vegetable sweat itself out. But you wanna make sure that when you're sauteing it for this particular dish, that you don't over saute, meaning that you don't want it to become mushy. You kind of want the vegetables to be al dente because this is gonna be going back into the oven and it's still gonna to continue to cook. So if you make it too mushy and then it's not, it's not gonna be all that wonderful. Um, and I'm cooking this in my copper chef pan because it really doesn't need anything. It's, it's nonstick, it's wonderful, it's great. Um, and I'm just going to add all of this goodness to the wild rice. And I've used two different types of mushrooms because I just like the flavor of the different mushrooms that, that go in here. And I've used the shiitake mushroom and I use the uh, baby bella mushrooms. But if there's any other mushrooms that you like, please feel free to go ahead and incorporate it in here. Next, we are going to add some parsley. And you can add as little. Now, if you want to use flat, you can use flat. If you want to use curly, you can use curly. The other thing I'm going to use is called barberries. I'm Persian and my heritage is from Iran and we use a lot of barberries and a lot of our cooking that we do. You can find barberries at any Middle Eastern store. You can probably find it at an Indian store or you can go to my Amazon favorite page and you can find it there. I've got it in the shop for you guys so it'll make it nice and easy for you guys to purchase. Barberries are absolutely delicious and they have, um, they're a little bit on the tart side. So it makes any dish, especially if you're trying to create a sweet and sour kind of dish, it is absolutely delicious. But the trick with the barberries is when you get them, you want to make sure that you rinse them and pick out all the, if there's any kind of rocks or anything that's in there. And then you want to soak it for about 10 to 15 minutes. Once it's soaked, take it out. And that's how we got this now. We've got our barberries. Now the recipe, I believe it calls for a half a cup of dried barberries, but as you can see, I'm gonna add a lot more because we absolutely love the flavor of the barberries. Now, I got an email from someone saying that they have access, they don't have access to getting barberries. What can they use instead? Well, you could use dried cherries. You could use, um, if you can find cranberries that are not, um, that they're oil free, you can use that. So, or you can just leave it out, but, Barberries, if you can find them, they're highly nutritious. They're, they're delicious, absolutely delicious. Next, I am going to add about a half a cup of dried mango. Now, make sure you get the ones that are unsaltered and you wanna make sure that there's no oil. A lot of times when you're buying dried fruit, unfortunately, they're adding sunflower oil to the dried fruit, which I don't know why, maybe to preserve it, but in all honesty, it doesn't, doesn't need it. You're going to want to mix all of this really well. And we're going to add be adding our seasoning. Our seasoning is going to be rosemary, sage, poultry. And I was always, I used to be really hesitant in using poultry seasoning because I didn't want it to taste like chicken. But come to find out that's not the case. And we're going to use some black pepper. So let's add the sage in here. You know, I never heard of barberries. Oh my God, barberries are absolutely, but you've had our, our Persian rice here with Right, it. but I, I just never knew that what it was called. Do you know that I met a Persian couple today when I was out walking and, and, and oh, yeah? they're, they're staying at the Wyndham and I told them how great it was to live here and that we had Persian people. And I, 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 I told them about, <laughs> they, they, of course they knew about Gorma Sapsi, but I'm like, gosh, oh, sure it was just here. <laughs> so, but I know you've had the barberry rice at my house. I just didn't know that's what they were called. Somebody's saying, could you use currants? Yes, absolutely, you can use currants. And if you're using the dried cherries or the currants, you don't have to soak it. It's just the, um, the barberries, it's, it's best if you, if you soaked it a little bit. So yeah, absolutely. And then we're going to add the, our poultry seasoning. And what else? And then we're gonna add some black pepper to this. 
Yeah, this this you, this dish that I used to make, I, it used to have hazelnuts in here, pistachios in here, walnuts in here. No more, none of that. And we're gonna do some black pepper. Are you making anything else to go with your Thanksgiving meal tonight? Yes, um, I am going to be making mashed sweet potatoes. I made an apple pie with cherries, a large salad. We're gonna be making Brussels sprouts. And I think that's truly about it. Why can't, why can't you and me and Tammy and Carol and Katie, why can't we all just live in the same place? Oh my God, Tammy and I talk about that all the time. It would be so much fun for all of us to live in the same place and we could just go from house to house to house to house. Well, well my, my community is very affordable. We could have each made a course and then had our dinner. That'd be amazing. That would be amazing. Catherine well, says, can you use blueberries? But you, you want it more of a dried fruit, right? You want it more of a dried fruit. The blueberries would have, I mean, you know what? The, what I always suggest is try it. What's the worst thing that could happen? You know, and if anything, something great may come out of it. Look how colorful this dish is. And that's what I want. I want a really colorful. So once this is done, the way we're going to serve it. Now, remember, back in the day, I used to do like 40 of these little pumpkins. So what I do is I take these little pumpkins and you slice it. You slice the top off and then you take out the inside but you don't want to take out the inside where you're taking all the meat out. So you want to leave some of the meat in there. Then what I do is I take this and I stuff it because I want everybody on their plate. Look how cute this, doesn't this look cute? It's adorable. Hey, where's your mom? Can I say hello to her? Does she want to make a cameo? My mom is upstairs and then I'm gonna put the top, but otherwise, if I would have known she went upstairs because she didn't want to distract anything that what we're doing today. She's so funny. Um, so yeah. What, what is the round one that looks like a delicata, Gina wants to know? I, you know what, these were all different. I don't know the names of these, but they were all just the different ones and they were actually running out of these. So I had to go and pick whatever I could find. So what we do is we put the tops on and then I'll be putting it in the oven. But isn't that cute? I just think it's really cute. So to save time, I have gone ahead and made some for and the rest of it. If, if, if there's any left over, I put it in a platter and I put that in the oven and until it bakes. So here's, here's the uh, finished version and what I do on top of that. And then here's the pumpkins. And literally, you could do any size of a pumpkin you could, you know, that you want. So the idea is you're going to take your favorite balsamic vinegar. You could take, back in the day, it was, I had, I used to do this with wine, and I would drizzle the tops of this with a really nice red wine, like a sweet red wine, but not doing that anymore. So you could use pomegranate molasses. And what I, I found this on Amazon, it's on my Amazon page but it's really nice because it does not have any added sugar to it. So it's just a pomegranate, which is, if you go to the Middle Eastern store, they have pomegranate molasses, but they've already, um, they have a lot of added sugar to it. So you could drizzle this with the pomegranate molasses. My favorite is California balsamics, the fig vinegar, or you could just use plain balsamic vinegar or something that's a little bit more rich and syrupy. So for today, I'm going to use the fig. You better because Thomas is watching. <laughs> oh, good. Hi, Thomas. Um, so I'm going to drizzle this with the fig balsamic vinegar. And then to top it off, we're going to add my favorite. What's my favorite fruit in the whole world? Pomegranate. You got it. Then we're going to add pomegranates on top. And that's how we're going to serve this. So Julie says, Shada has such an awesome creative brain. My favorite day at the fasting escape was when Shada shared her cooking and evening with us. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, one other thing that I'm going to do today is I'm going to take this stuffing and I've got a lot of brown rice paper. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the stuffing and I'm going to put in the brown rice paper, roll it up like an egg roll. I'm going to put it in the air fryer and air fry it. So that's another way for us to enjoy the stuffing. So there's many, many options that you can do with this. And I just think, you know, we eat with our eyes and we got to make sure that we have something that's really beautifully presented and it's delicious. It's absolutely delicious. And we're going to do the same thing with, um, with these. When you buy your little pumpkins, make sure that the tops have the little stem because it just makes it easier for you to be able to lift it. And I think for these, I'm going to use the uh, pomegranate molasses just to make it a little bit different. And it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot, just a little bit. AJ, if you were here, you could have this today. I know it sounds delicious. Hey, thank you, Andrea Z, for the super chat saying happy Thanksgiving from me and Sam. Thanks to you and your wonderful guests for a wonderful presentation. Oh, Shada, your food looks so good. We're adding some pomegranates to it. I know there's no nuts and beans or anything. So this would be right up your alley. Yeah, but you did put black pepper in. Remember, I'm allergic to black pepper. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I forgot. Yeah. What are you, well, trying to kill me? Well, I love no, your apron. Never, never, no. Shada, where did you get that apron? It's beautiful. You know, um, Barbara Matheson, she made it for me. Wow. That's yeah, pretty it's creative. It's reversible, so you could wear it two ways. Um, but yeah, but she made it for me. So that's going to be our stuffing, guys. It's super easy, really easy. And you know, some of the stuff you can make ahead of time. And um, I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. And I can't wait uh, to see you guys what you're making for your meals. Well, thank you so much, Shada. I'm so thankful for your friendship and all the good that you're putting in the world. Shada, stay on for a minute so maybe we can rib the next chef. He's our brother from another mother. I see that he's in the broadcast studio. Chef Bravo, do you want to unmute yourself and put your camera on? He's going to be making soup. We went out of order because Ramses is actually working today. You think and, he's and actually working? Yep. He, so wait, I've got to get him on. But uh, Mark is asking if you actually eat the pumpkin. Yes, you can actually eat the pumpkin. You can definitely eat the pumpkin meat, not a problem. And if you guys go to my YouTube at Healthy Cooking with Shada, I did a whole YouTube video and showed you guys exactly step by step as to how I made this stuffing. So there's a, and there's a lot of other YouTube videos that are helpful. It tells you about, I even did a video on how to de-seed a pomegranate. So yes, absolutely, you can eat the pumpkin. Great. So I see Ramses is unmuted, but he hasn't put his camera. You remember Liliana from True North? She says, thank yeah, you, Shada. Yeah, hi, Liliana. Hi. Yeah, this is hey. our second. Hey, look who's here, Shada. Hey, I Ramses. I am working, Shada. Hi, Ramses. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you, too. All right. I'm ready whenever you are. Yeah. Um, did you want to turn your camera the other way? But actually, this is fine. So I, did, I thought you I thought you got Thanksgiving off, but it's, I guess it's just Christmas, huh? No, Christmas we get off. Christmas is when we're off. And then uh, Thanksgiving dinner. So we work until about two today. Wow. Well, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. You're going to be making a beautiful avocado squash duo. The recipe is in the YouTube box already. Facebook watchers, you got to grab, go over to YouTube to grab it. This is none other than one of the most wonderful SOS Free Chefs, the executive chef at True North, Chef Ramses Bravo. All right. Here I am. Hello, everybody. <laughs> can you see me? I can. I see your beard and I see the pot. Okay. <laughs> How about now? Can you see me now? Yep. Yeah, you look good. Okay. All right. So we are ready. Um, I'll get, go ahead and get started here. So this came about because um, on my uh, on my YouTube channel, I wanted to do something fun. So lately I've been like picking random ingredients, putting them on a, a wheel that you spin or that I spin. And whatever ingredients it lands on, I end up using those ingredients to make something. Um, so this is one of the ideas that came from it. Uh, and when you asked me to do this uh, Thanksgiving dinner, I thought this would fit nicely. Um, so I think you're, uh, you guys are going to really enjoy this. So the first thing I'm going to show you while my pot heats up, and let me know if, if you can't, if you can see things or not. So right here, I just took one fig. This was one of the ingredients I had to use. So dried figs, and all I did was slice it. So you can see I have some uh, slices here. 
I'm going to put it in the container here in my little ramekin. And I'm going to take a mandarin orange. And then I'm just going to squeeze the juice in here just so that it soaks. This is going to be part of the garnish. So one mandarin here. In with the figs. And now that it's soaking, I'm just going to leave it alone. We'll get to that at the end. All right. So this is essentially two soups. You actually get two recipes in one. Uh, you can uh, prepare them separately or you know together as I'm going to show you. So I'm going to do some yellow onions, some uh, white uh, or stems from a green Swiss chard, and a little bit of garlic in the pot and with some diced butternut squash. And essentially all I want to do is dry saute this a little bit so my pot was dry. There is no liquid in here. I want to caramelize the butternut squash just a little bit along with the onions and the garlic. Right. You know, Ramses, now that I think of it, you're the only male on the show today. Uh, Dylan couldn't make it. And th there seems to be less uh, less sh male chefs interested in SOS free than females. It's not manly. That's why. That's what I was going to say, because, you know, there have been so many chefs that turned down being on the show only because even just saying you can't use oil, they won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, doing the SOS free is not sexy. It's not uh uh, how should I put it? The lingo is, uh, it's not ballsy. <laughs> so, all right. So you see here, I've got a, a, a little bit of caramelization going, which is what I need. And now I can put in my uh, broth, which I have nice and hot for uh, time purposes. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to bring this to a um, simmer uh, and let it simmer for five-ish, ten-ish minutes. Okay? So I'm going to switch this with another pot. I'm going to get that one cooking. And in the meantime, we're going to start the... Uh, hey, hey Ramses, I didn't read this. When you said that SOS free isn't sexy, Gina said high cholesterol and heart attacks aren't sexy either, and neither is impotence. <laughs> well, I'm talking chef terms, like chef world terms. No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. All right. So similar to what I started with, onions and garlic. And for this one, uh, what's important for this one is I don't want any color here. I just want to sweat out the onions and garlic. The reason I could use some caramelization in the butternut squash is because when I blend that one, it's still going to have that bright orange color from the butternut squash. However, if I do any browning on the avocado one, I want to keep that one nice, bright and green. And so if there's any browning here, it's going to start getting it you know, the, the bright green color is going to muddy it a little bit. So I don't want that. Susan says, tell Chef Ramses it's sexy to see a man cooking healthy in the kitchen. <laughs> well, and, thank you. And our friend Linda's on. She says, I love his Bravo burgers. Uh, thank you. All right. If you see that you start getting a little bit of color, which I'm seeing on the edge of the uh, pot here, I can always take a little bit of broth to stop that browning from happening, add it on. All right, so this is my arugula here that I'm gonna add, as well as my parsley. And these are just sort of rough chop, nothing uh, major, okay? So again, I just wanna sweat them out a little bit. And once I achieve that, I'm going to go ahead and add the, uh, the broth to this. Which again, I have hot for time saving purposes. Okay, 
for this one, again, I'm trying to keep it as bright green as possible. I'm going to give you a better look here. All right. So for this one, I want to keep it as bright green as possible. So once the broth goes in, as soon as it uh, comes to a simmer, it's, it's ready. All right. While that comes up to temperature, I will show you uh, my other um, piece of garnish that I'm going to use. So these are some um, toasted pine nuts. These are optional, obviously, for those of you who don't want to do any nuts. Uh, you can leave these out, not a problem. I like them in the, in the dish because it adds a uh, nutty component to it, which is really nice. And for somebody who's going to ask, I'm sure, these were toasted in the oven. I put them in something like this, a little um, oven tray, 350 degrees. They don't take long. It's like a two minute uh, uh, cooking time because pine nuts toast really fast. Ramses, right. people are asking what kind of broth you're using and how to make it, but is that recipe, it's in one of your books, isn't it? It's in my first book. Uh, I, I always use the, the broth that we make in house. We don't, we don't buy any broth ever. Ramses, I got Ramses. I got to tell you about. I know you probably don't have time to watch my stuff, but I got this new machine called the Nutra Milk, and it's a hundred dollars off. You guys should buy it for True North because you can make your own plant milks and your own nut butters. But what's really cool is I can make broth in it in like two minutes from scraps, and it's raw broth, and it's so good. What's it called? It's called the Nutra Milk, and it's amazing because it's a hundred dollars off for these next four days. I have a code, but it's it's and and it makes like nut butters in minutes from either raw or roasted nuts and tahini, and it makes every kind of plant milk. You don't need to soak, you don't need to strain, so you'll end up saving so much money. But I can make broth in it because it's like this really powerful thing with this wiper blade, and you just put in these raw vegetables, and like in three minutes, you've got like raw broth. It's unbelievable. Oh, cool. Well, send me the link. I'll, I'll check it out. Absolutely. All right. You saw that this guy came to a simmer. Uh, so, you know, it's done. Ready to go. So I'm taking an avocado, splitting it in half. Nice and uh, green. Just took the pit off. And I'm going to go ahead and add it to the soup. So the avocado here is providing sort of a creaminess to it, plus uh, it's it's the thickener for the soup as well. Um, if all I did was just added the uh, arugula and the parsley and the onions and decided to blend that, it would be too brothy, which is fine. But since we're going to combine it with the other soup, you can't have two soups come together in the same pot, in the same bowl. and not have the same uh, thickness, the same consistency, because one will just sort of run into the other. So, and I'll show you what I mean in just a second. All right, so my avocado is in. Into the blender, this goes. Turn this off. I don't know if you can see the blender. Oh yeah, you can, okay. So this one's gonna get blended. All right, so that one's ready. Because I knew I didn't have a lot of time, I made a batch of the butternut squash one uh, separate. So this is the one that I just cooked. This is the one that's already simmered for five to 10 minutes. And I did that just for time constraint here. This comes down, this goes up. Just imagine that the soup cooked for, you know, 
the butternut one cooked for, it simmered for about 10 ish minutes. And so that's, you know, when it was ready, put it in the blender. My idea here for this dish was to combine something that's really nice and sweet here with the butternut squash uh, soup, along with something that's sort of nice and fresh and, and different so that the contrast between the two comes off together really nice. Okay. I'm gonna blend this a little bit because it was one little leaf of uh, arugula here. So give me one second. All right. So now I have my bowl here, as you see. I'm going to remove the covers from my blenders. If you don't have two blenders, which most of you probably won't, uh, make the green soup first and then pour it into a container uh, and then give that a quick rinse. Go ahead and pour your um, butternut wine uh, and then you'll have that. So you would have a blender here and a container, uh, you know, regular container to, to, to use. Uh, here in the kitchen and most uh, commercial kitchens, there's at least two blenders at all times. Okay, so now I shake them a little bit just to make sure that they're in comparable in consistency, which is important. And now I am going to slowly pour from both sides, sort of at the same time. See, I wanna make sure the camera sees this, but I'm running into my tripod, so give me a second. Okay, so now I start to pour. Okay. Ah, I got one little. Drop. That is some fancy plating. <laughs> it takes a little bit of practice. You just have to pour sort of at the same rate. Are you going to put like a circle of the other color on the other color, like a yin yang symbol? No, that's what the figs are for. So the fig then goes in one here. one there, so you see that, and so you have your sweet side here, you have your sort of herbal sort of side here, a kick of the fresh, or I'm sorry, the dried fruit, and then just a hint of nuttiness with the, uh, with the pine nuts. That is so beautiful, and I'm so hungry. I forgot to ask you, uh, Chef Bravo, what are you thankful for, and how can people find you and follow you? Oh, sure. Uh, so my website is um, bravopb.com. So that's my last name, and then initials for plant-based, bravopb.com. Uh, in my website, you can find my online cooking courses. My uh, second online cooking course is going to be released uh, within like 10 days kind of a thing. Uh, so it's coming up very, very soon. And then you can also find my YouTube channel, uh, two words, Bravo, and then plant space all together. So you can see me do that uh, Bravo PV wheel as well as other, other videos there. Um, and then if you've ever been to True North, you know that I'm the uh, chef here. I've been here now, AJ, I've been here 13 plus years now. <laughs> oh my God. Well, Linda says you're amazing. And Jillian said, I'd love to have him cook for me. So I guess, I guess the chef thing's starting to work out for you, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not too bad. So what are you thankful for? I know, I bet you're gonna say Lulu. Uh, yeah, always my daughter, first and foremost. Uh, but this, this particular uh, Thanksgiving, um, I was thinking about it today because I'm, I'm gonna be spending it by myself today. Uh, and I wanted to just be thankful for my uh, failures and my shortcomings uh, this year because they, they've taught me something. Uh, and I think that's very important to, to, uh, to be thankful for that. And I'll even uh, show the camera so. Hi. Well, this, I really appreciate you doing this. I know how busy you are. And guys, if you want him to cook for you, just go to True North. <laughs> yeah, come on down. We're here. 
So I hope you enjoy that. This actually tastes pretty good. Uh, they it taste better once you eat them together. Uh, by themselves, they're pretty good as, as they are. But the contrast between all the flavors and the textures, the chewiness of the fig and the crunchy of the, of the uh, pine nuts, it all comes together so, so well. Um, so I hope you, you guys enjoy that. And uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. I hope that uh, you guys all have a, a great uh, Thanksgiving here in 2020, which has been crazy. But uh, hey, you know, we're all doing the best we can. So. Yeah, well, well, thank you for all you do to make SOS free eating healthy, delicious, accessible. And Deborah's saying, I still have a pair of earrings made by Lulu. I have about 40 of those pair. Yeah, you know, she, um, she kind of stopped doing that a little bit. Uh, 2020 has just been sort of crazy. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, she's still uh, hoping to get back to it, you know, here and there. So. Great. Well, say hi to Griselda and Mauricio. We'd love to have them on if they'd like to come on and cook. And please wish Dr. Goldhammer a happy Thanksgiving for us. Thank you so much, bro. Okay, well, Griselda's here if you want to say a quick hello. Hi, Griselda. Good to see you. Nice I don't to know see where Mauricio you. went. Thank you so much, sweetheart. She's so cute. She's so <laughs> nice. I love them at Trunar. It, don't you kind of miss the extravaganza just a little bit, Ramses? A little bit, yeah. A little bit because it was a lot of... Uh, a lot of things happening and it was sort of uh, a lot of action which was nice but yeah i, I understand the decision well thank you so much ramses ramses Thanks, just like you. you're so welcome guys ramses and every chef that's been on today has their own one hour episode next month so you'll get to see a full thing before i introduce our next and final guest for the pièce de résistance dessert i need to thank lee vegan lee Maria and Nancy for the super chat donations. I'm very thankful. And I'm thankful for you guys for just for watching. Who knew that this little pandemic show would become such a hit? So the, the chef that's coming up now, her food is as beautiful as she is. And if you notice that I started to look better on the show from not wearing so many t-shirts and tank tops, but wearing proper clothes for a lady, it is because Elspeth Feldman, also known as the Speedy Vegan, who often appears with her beautiful daughter, Kaylee, on the show, just bought me a bunch of tops and it's like once I started wearing the nice tops I'm not wearing one of them today I'm like I can't go back to wearing t-shirts she is going to make chocolate pecan tartlets they are easy to make they are healthy whole food delicious SOS free please welcome back to the show Elspeth Felsen the speedy vegan hello Elspeth hi chef AJ thank you so much for having me here today and happy Thanksgiving to everybody Oh my God, your set looks like a, like a TV show and I love your shirt. Why didn't I get that one? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I, I tried to get it for you. You said you didn't want to handle the boob thing. So yeah. But, but now that I see it, I knew it looks amazing. So tell us about your recipe. And first, tell us what you're thankful for other than your awesome husband and children. Oh, well, I am thankful for Mother Nature and all of its bounty. And I'm especially thankful for all the whole food plant-based experts out there, including you, Chef AJ, who have taught us how to eat this healthy way and why to eat this healthy way. So, and of course, I'm very thankful for my family and for my beautiful um, rescue German Shepherd dog, Prince, who's uh, made a big difference to our lives this year. And um, really just thankful for, you know, for love and family and friends and, and a roof over my head and um, all this wonderful food that we get to enjoy. Terrific. So um, I'm gonna get busy with the chocolate pecan tart. Well, this is gonna be a little bit noisy because I've got to have the food processor going and I'll also have the blender going a little bit. So this is a special occasion dessert because it is kind of rich. We have a lot of pecans, a lot of um, avocados is gonna be the one uh, ingredient, but it's delicious and you don't need to have a whole lot of it because it's very rich. So I have some pecans that I'm gonna pop into my food processor here with the um, S blade inserted in it. And I also have dates. So this is about two, um, 10 ounces of dates, so I'm gonna go pop those in here. Um, and to give the, this is, I'm making the crust of the tart right now. So um, to give the crust a little bit of flavor, I'm gonna add some cinnamon. So pop that in there. And then I'm just gonna pulse this up together and it's gonna form into a nice little dough, which I'll press into my little tart and tartlet pan. So a little bit of noise coming up here. Okay. 
actually, you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to get the um, the filling for the tart going at the same time, so we can just have double noise all at once and get the noisy part yep. out of the way. Hey, Elizabeth, a question: Are the pecans raw or toasted? The pecans are raw. Everything is raw. So this this whole recipe is a raw recipe. And as your beautiful guest, what was her name? Karen uh, Calabrese this week. Anyway, Karen Calabrese. Yeah, yeah. 73, 74 years old, and she was beautiful. And she's a raw vegan chef. So. Um, any incentive to eat raw, this is raw. This is right up her alley. So um, these are medjool dates that I have here. So I always remember to take out the pits because one pit can ruin an entire recipe, um, which I've done before. So got dates going in there. And I've also got some raw cacao. So cacao powder is like cocoa powder, but it's raw, it's not roasted. So that's going in. Um, and then I have avocados. So avocados are a wonderful source of uh, healthy fat, whole food, plant-based fat. So I'm gonna cut, um, I only need two of them, but as you know, with avocados, you don't always get the perfect avocado each time. So I always bring out a couple extra. Um, and I find that Haas avocados are usually the ones that work out the best for me. So I'm just gonna cut open. That's pretty good, that's a good one. So I'm gonna take out the pit and this recipe calls for two medium avocados. You will get the recipe and all the ingredients from Chef AJ. So um, not to worry about writing anything down. Um, so I'm gonna use, this is a pretty good sized avocado. So I could probably get away with just using one and a half. So I'll choose another big one here, let it open. And avocado is gonna add the creaminess to this um, lovely recipe. So there you go, another good one. I always celebrate a good avocado. So I'm just gonna go with one and a half of those. Linda says you look like a Greek goddess. Katie may look like a Disney princess and you look like a Greek goddess. <laughs> I'll be the Disney princess Greek goddess. How about yeah. that? Are, are you wearing, the, is your top from Boston proper or Venus? This is the Boston proper. So it's just, you know, it just, it's really cute and really fun. And um, well, would they have 40% off today? Is that top still available? Cause I'll snag it. Oh, okay. Yeah. 40% off today uh, on bostonproper.com. Um, I don't know. I didn't check to see, but now that I know you want it, it might be coming your way. Chef well, no, no, you have to eat me. Stop, please stop. But, but God, everything looks beautiful on you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're very sweet. Um, I'm also going to add in some almond milk. So, um, I make almond milk pretty much every other day. Um, and I have a video on my YouTube channel. Uh, if you go to our YouTube channel, which is Vegan News Daily, you can see a whole lot of recipes, fabulous recipes, um, tips and tricks. But anyway, if you head over there, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Vegan News Daily, and you'll see how I make almond milk. Um, but that machine you were talking about, Chef AJ, sounds amazing. I think you're going to have to get it. Yeah. It's a hundred dollars yeah. off right now. I think I'm going to put a link to your YouTube channel. It's pretty good. I'm having a lot of fun with it actually. Okay, good. So now I've got this little mixture ready. I'm going to hit my food processor and my blender and hope that I don't you know, knock out the electricity here. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure this is creamy and smooth. Wow, you're doing it without the top on? I could keep blending it and make sure that it's perfectly smooth. But the next step in this recipe is I simply need to figure out what shape tart I'm going to make. 
I had made one um, last week for a class that we had. I was I just finished teaching a pardon my turkey Thanksgiving class, and I made a chocolate pecan tart. So this is for a tart that you would serve, you know, on Thanksgiving to a whole lot of people if you wanted one single tart. Um, you could also make it in rectangular, a rectangular tart pan. So you want one of those tart pans. I use the fluted ones that the bottom comes up because that way it's easy to get out. Um, I often make rectangular ones, but, um, and this is a fun shape as well. So let me but give you some nice today, props. So, oh, go ahead. I just want to read you some nice comments. Carol says, I subscribe to all of their cooking classes and they're amazing. And Deborah Chen said she took it and loved it. And yes, Liliana, her website is thespeedyvegan.com, also Vegan News Daily. Infinite Love and Gratitude said she made an avocado chocolate mousse and they're calling it chocomole now. That's pretty clever. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to show you another way that I like to serve this as well. So, um, so for the tartlets, though, you can use these little mini uh, fluted tart pans, which I'm going to show you how I do that. So I just take some of the um, clean hands. Um, we're all much better at that these days. So I'm going to take some of the um, crust mixture and press it into the base of the uh, tart pan here. So I just want to press it into the base and then up the sides a little bit. And I'll just go all the way around, pressing it in. Um, yeah, we've had a, one, a wonderful year of cooking on Vegan News Daily. Um, I've been the sort of recipe developer and instructor at Vegan News Daily along with my daughter. And we have done all sorts of wonderful classes and made all sorts of recipes from around the world. It's been a great way to travel the world without leaving your kitchen. So we've made Indian food and Thai food and French food and um, Asian food. We've done all sorts of different things. So it's been fun. And um, yeah, we love our members and we're having a lot of fun creating whole food plant-based recipes that are SOS free. So that would be my one tart crust but I know a lot of you might not have these fancy little fluted tart pans so I came up with a really fun idea um, these are just mason jar lids that you know you would you would put on the top of a jar um, you can use these as tart pans so I'm going to do a few of those as well so if you just take some of the crust and again just push it into the base and the bottom of the little lids here and we're going to come up with all these cute, you know, you can make big ones and small ones. I really like the small one because that's about the right size. Because as I say, it's very rich, very sweet, very dense dessert. Um, and we don't want to have too much of it, but we're also allowed to have a little fun, right? So that would be a good size one. And I'll make a little small one here. And then we'll get to scooping it in the filling as well. So, gonna so this right here. baking for your Thanksgiving dinner in addition to chocolate on tartlets. So um, for on the dessert end of it, um, I have actually have some of the things right here. I made this beautiful little um, pumpkin t uh, flan so that I have a little slice of persimmon with. So that's going to be one of the desserts. Of course, we're going to have chocolate tarts. And then I always make these um, turkeys, which are fun. So this is my fruit turkey. Uh, it's just my husband and I here for Thanksgiving this year. So we're having a little micro Thanksgiving, but I always make a turkey and I wasn't gonna not make a turkey this year. So this is my fruit turkey. And I always make a little veggie turkey as well. So we've got this guy, whole bunch of raw veggies. And I have my spinach and artichoke dip, which is really fun. I've got a citrus fennel salad. We're gonna have, um, we decided because I've had three weeks of just eating um, Thanksgiving food with all the, the recipe developing and all the classes that I was doing. So we decided that we wanted, well, my husband's request was let's go with some of the, the recipes from the Thai class. So I've got a Thai pumpkin curry. I've got a uh, green papaya salad. I've got some um, corn and pumpkin fritters that I'm serving with a chili sauce. So I'm getting in the pumpkin, I'm getting in the corn, but I'm not necessarily doing traditional um, Thanksgiving food because we've literally eaten Thanksgiving food for three weeks straight now. <laughs> so now I get to do the filling part of this. Pop this lid off. 
So all it is, is this is turned into a delicious chocolate mousse. So I'll just take a little bit of this um, chocolate and pop it into the pan, uh, into each little tartlet here. And then I'll decorate it with pecans on top. So you have pecans on the top, pecans on the, butt, on the uh, crust and chocolate in between. So, so I could just smooth that around, turn this into a, a lovely, and this is, it's like a chocolate mousse. So I'll scoot that around. And then you can just decorate it however you like. On this big guy here, I might just do three half pecans on the top. So there, that would be my one little tart. Um, and then as I go smaller on the tots, I put fewer and fewer pecans. So I love chocolate. I'm an absolute chocoholic and I live with chocolate lovers, but I'm the only chocoholic. So we always have to have a chocolate dessert and that's how this recipe came about. So for this one, so obviously when I, when I serve it, I would pop it out of, I'm not gonna serve it in this, with this lid around it. So I'll show you how you just very easily pop it out. So that pops out very easily. Um, and then I'm just gonna decorate this one with a few little pecans on top. Um, can't quite decide how I want that. I think I'm just gonna put one on that guy. And then I'll scoop a little bit in here. And I'm gonna take the lid, The I'm gonna pop this out of its base. So you can see how that goes. I'm gonna smooth this over. And this guy will get a little pecan on top. But I know a lot of us are also trying to, so here you have all these beautiful little tartlets, whatever size you want, or you could have this, um, this big one as well. So that's a good option. Listen, but, before, yep. Elspeth, before the show ends, if you could just come a little closer to the camera and then show it again, just because you are a little bit far away for close-ups. Okay, I definitely will do that. I just wanted to show you one quick option whilst I'm still back here. Um, so this is another option that I always like. I love tiny desserts and my daughter Kaylee especially likes tiny desserts. So I like to get- That's why you stuff. and Kaylee are tiny because you eat tiny desserts. <laughs> well, Kaylee's definitely tiny, but um, yeah. So we won't go there, we won't go there. So I have a piping bag, which I have a you know nice big nib, um, a tip, sorry, in here. So I'm just going to spoon some of this lovely mixture in, from my blender into my piping bag. And I'm going to use these shot glasses and I'll just squeeze a little bit of this into each glass. So for someone who's just wanting to have a little taste of this dessert, but not wanting, you know, all the calories and the rich crust, because um, if you're like me, if it's in front of me, I would, um, I would go ahead and eat it. So I'm going to squeeze a little bit of this in here. And this is, this is kind of like the chocomole. Um, so this is what it is. So, okay, there you go. And I would just add a little, one little pecan to the top of each one. And here we have our cute little chocomole shots. So that's a chocolate pecan tart sort of deconstructed. Um, and I've got my little tartlets here and the little chocolate shots. That is spectacular. That, those are what we got. Um, and we have a Green Friday special going on that I wanted to let all of your viewers know about uh, with our Vegan News Daily cooking classes. We have a, it's, we, it's Black Friday, but we like to call it Green Friday. So if you go to veganewsdaily.com slash store, you'll be able to see all of our courses and classes um, available at 20% off right now. And uh, we have, as I say, we have a, a number, each, each series has like three different themes, three different classes in it. All the classes are recorded. You get recipe books with, you know, 30 to 40 recipes in each course, um, recorded classes, Facebook groups, so we can support you and answer any questions. And we have a really wonderful uh, community of uh, people with great ideas, people have different allergies and things that they can't, you know, can't eat and everyone supports each other. Um, so yeah, head on over to veganusedaily.com slash tour and check out our selections if you wanna have some fabulous plant-based options. Um, 
And um, actually, while I was thinking of allergy, I did have an email from one of your viewers about today's class, and she said that they had an avocado allergy in their family. So if you wanted to just leave the avocado out altogether, if that was something that you needed to do, you could just use extra dates to soak them in water and make like a ganache filling for this and then put the pecans on top. So that's another option. Or maybe maybe a nut butter. And nut, oh right, and it, sorry, that recipe does have um, some almond butter. So it's just dates, almond butter, and um, soak, the, soak the dates in water, almond butter, the raw cacao powder, and a little bit of um, almond butter, so right. yeah. So I'd like you to take everything and if you could just show everything closer in the meantime. <laughs> Diane and Jeannie for a super chat. I've never gotten more than this has like been the best show ever. And people said, oh, don't do it on the holiday. Yes, do it on the holiday because we need to be all together on the holiday since we can't be together. So come close to the camera so everybody can see that. You're so welcome, Carol. Thank you for being here. This has just been so fun. I was thinking of doing it at Christmas, but the chefs don't want to, don't want to work Christmas. Can you see this, Chef AJ? Yes. That's it. So there's the little ch chocolate pecan tartlets. These are your little, um, what are we calling them? Chocomole pecan shots. And this is the um, chocolate pecan pie tart. <laughs> and that's it. Um, wow, and, and they want to see the turkey too. The turkey, okay. Here you go. Turkey. That's, that is precious. That's my fruity guy. And this is my um, veggie guy. Oh my God, that's so cute. But this year, my veggie guy ended up getting eyelashes. I have some um, dill that I use to make eyelashes on them. So um, he's really beautiful. And I'm going to serve him with, um, I have a spinach and artichoke dip, which is a real crowd pleaser for the holidays. So that's a really fun recipe. But yeah, we've got all sorts of fun recipes. So, um, you know, this, this way of eating is just so easy and so delicious. And I, as I say, I'm, I am thankful for nature's bounty and thankful for all of you wonderful chefs and experts and doctors out there who have taught us so much about why we eat this way. And speaking of wonderful doctors, I am doing a bonus show today in about 53 minutes after I grab some lunch with a wonderful plant-based doctor that most of you probably have never heard of. And Susie says, thanks for the spectacular day of Thanksgiving videos. You made us feel, though it's on Zoom, your presentations like we were in the room. Well, thank you. And I hope you guys will come back into uh, Heather wants that spinach and artichoke dip. <laughs> yeah, you can dive right in, Heather. We'll save some for you. Well, Heather, I want your cauliflower pizza because that's amazing. And, and she's, she's like you. She makes her food real pretty. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that. I love playing with my food. I know Heather does that too. It's really yeah. fun. Well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. And Elspeth, like all the other seven chefs that came on today, will have their own one-hour episode so you can get more of them and even more great recipes. Thank you so much, Elspeth. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all the chefs that came on today. I appreciate all you guys watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Today was the bonus holiday cook-along. Come back at two o'clock for a wonderful plant-based doctor who I'm going to introduce you to. And how can we support you, follow you, throw you some love, Speedy Vegan? Oh, you can follow me, please, on um, Instagram. I have a lot of fun over on Instagram at The Speedy Vegan. We also have Vegan News Daily, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Speedy Vegan, and, and, uh, and Vegan News Daily. <laughs> but thanks very much, Chef AJ. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving, oh, and, guys. And YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're always putting fun videos up there. We'd love that. Thanks. Great. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving.